Picture for a moment our world in its entirety. Think of everything in it, and think of the answer to this question. Where would you like to visit if you had the chance to do so? More than likely, none of you answered Antarctica, and I don't blame you. After all, the seventh continent is the only one to have no true populace, and many consider it the most unlivable place on Earth for equally understandable reasons. But while it may be a frozen tundra, that doesn't mean it doesn't have things to be discovered. Here now are 20 strange things found frozen in ice on Antarctica. Number 20. The Endurance no, I'm not talking about the endurance of man to go and brave this frozen place, though you could probably find that too if you dug deep enough. Rather, I'm talking about the famous ship known as the Endurance. And if you don't know about the ship, it was the lost vessel of Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton, and when it was found, it was a big deal. The ship was crushed by sea ice and sank in 1915, forcing Shackleton and his men to make an astonishing escape on foot and in small boats. The remains themselves were found within the waters of Antarctica, and video would be captured of the find, showing the vessel in better shape than you may think. Its timbers, although disrupted, are still very much together, and the name Endurance is clearly visible on the stern. Without any exaggeration, this was the finest wooden shipwreck that anyone had ever seen by far. It was upright and well proud of the seabed, intact and in a brilliant state of preservation. A part of that preservation might honestly be due to the frigid Antarctic waters that they found it in, as well as the fact that this wasn't a surface vessel that you could have seen if you had simply poked your head under the water. This was almost 10,000 feet below sea level. The further good news, because of certain charters, the Endurance is now labeled an Antarctic monument and thus cannot be disturbed outside of those, like the ones who found it, who intend to examine and research it. Finding this ship was the goal of a lot of people and is truly a dream come true of theirs that is now rediscovered. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Antarctica might not have many people living on it, only a few specific scientific groups, but there are plenty of mysteries that surround it. What they discovered in Antarctica shocked the whole world. And one of them is that there might just be aliens within the continent somehow. Which brings us to this picture, which some have said is a recreation of an alien craft that would be found frozen in the ice of the continent. This wouldn't be the first time that alien artifacts have been claimed to have been found in the ice and snow there, but one would have to ask the question of, if this was really found, why aren't we talking about it more? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below using the hashtag FancyTopic. Number 19. Lake Vostok if you were to take a look at Antarctica from above, or even just a nice landscape view, you'd likely only really see two things, ice and snow. Which is fair, because it's a frozen tundra, and thus meant to be comprised of those things. However, if you do go and dive beneath the ice and snow, and go really deep into the crust of the continent, you're going to find subglacial lakes. Yes, real non-frozen lakes, and the biggest one to ever be found in Antarctica is that of Lake Vostok. To be clear though, there have been over 400 of these kind of lakes found on the continent. It's just food for thought. And if you're wondering just how far down you'd have to go in order to reach it, that would be about 2.5 miles straight down through a ton of ice and snow, all just to reach this big lake. It seems impossible, and yet it's there. It's theorized that the lake has been ice covered for at least 15 million years, and you may be wondering about something called ice cores. Well, yes, scientists have been trying to dig deeper and deeper into the bigger ice chunks of our world, and they literally drill down into them and pull up core samples in order to examine them. And believe it or not, this simple ice is literally a snapshot of the world's history, as things are often frozen in it. Oh, and if you don't believe me on how big the lake is, it's roughly 149 miles long and 31 miles wide and a few hundred meters deep. That rivals Lake Ontario on the record. Number 18. Those Within the Ice 
Remember how I just told you that there are things frozen within the ice under Antarctica's surface and that the ice cores can help reveal more about them? Well, I wasn't only talking about microscopic things, there are actually animals in there as well. Researchers from Northern Illinois University would spend three months in 2020 probing the Ross Ice Shelf as they drilled down and examined the ice core. That's where they found a set of strange creatures that may just hint at an actual ecosystem within the ice itself. According to them, the things that they found were very much like crustaceans and were said to crawl or swim through the terrain of the ice. They also noted that because of the conditions, it would be honestly nearly impossible for them to thrive there because they don't have enough nutrients to feed upon, which makes sense because they're frozen in a giant slab of ice. But why is it so important to compare it to other discoveries? Because, as noted before, there are a lot of people who think that Antarctica is barren in the sense that there's no life within it, but both in the surface, the snow, and the waters around, along with the ice. We now know that to be a falsehood. Things can live in and be found around Antarctica. It just happens to be that you need to adapt to what is around you and be able to endure harsh temperatures. But we know of other creatures in hot and cold areas that can do that, so why not here? Number 17. Whiskey. This one's quite hilarious, but I promise it's actually true, and it has to deal with someone that I've already spoken about before, Ernest Shackleton. When he was doing his exploration of the continent, he made a hut where he would keep various supplies, and in that hut was some whiskey. That whiskey stayed beneath that hut for over a hundred years until some new explorers would literally dig it up out of the snow. The three cases of what is now aged scotch and two cases of brandy would be left behind when Shackleton ran out of other supplies and gave up his attempt to reach the South Pole in 1909. Between this and his shipwreck, you can say that the guy wasn't having the best of times down there, even though he clearly brought more alcohol than anyone really expected. The team that dug it up would go on to say that they thought there were two crates possibly containing whiskey under the 1908 building, but to their amazement, they actually found five, three labeled as containing whiskey and two labeled as containing brandy. Oh, but it does get more hilarious. The people that launched the expedition to get these items were the owners of the distillery that was indeed the one who gave Shackleton his whiskey in 1909. So they literally sent people to Antarctica just to get their own scotch back. Well, that's humanity for you. Just as naturally, they wanted to examine the contents of the bottles, as there was still alcohol in them, and determine the contents so that they could make a historic blend based on what was made in the early 1900s. One can only imagine what old Ernest himself would have thought of this expedition. Number 16. Dry Valleys Here's a fact about Antarctica that may blow your perception out of the water. I told you earlier that if you looked at the continent from above, you'd see mostly ice and water. But here's the rub. There are actually a few spots on the continent that are almost ice and snow free. They're arid areas known as dry valleys, and they're an anomaly within the continent that has gotten a lot of attention over the years, as you would imagine. Just as ironic though, these are dry valleys that also have some of the oldest ice of the continent buried within their dirt mounds. They also have frozen lakes that surround them, and at times they even have streams. As you may have guessed, there are some big scientific discoveries to be had here, including one overhead shot of the valleys that revealed that a layer of glacial permafrost that was within one of the valleys was actually beginning to melt, which is bad because that should not be happening. Not to mention having a dry valley suddenly dealing with melted ice, and thus water is going to wreak havoc on the ecosystem that's built up there. And if it's melting here, there are things that are melting all over the place. That's why so many are trying to stop global warming, because if places like Antarctica melt enough and raise the ocean levels, the words, we're screwed, doesn't quite cover it. Number 15. The Blood Falls 
This is easily one of the most iconic things that you can see in Antarctica, which isn't really saying much, but hey, at least you have something to look at, because if you do go to a certain spot near the continent, you get to see water bleed. Known as the Blood Falls, this unique phenomenon would first be discovered by scientists as a frozen waterfall in 1911. They had noticed that a part of the cliff had been stained in dark red, and the reason was actually unknown. Eventually, the falls were seen and the water indeed flows red and goes right into the ocean itself. Naturally, many would be curious about why the falls of this glacier were red. The original belief was that the falls were filled with red algae that was being fused with the water to make it turn color, which for the record does happen in certain places on Earth today, but eventually that theory would be debunked. It was actually later revealed that the contents of the water contained a lot of iron and that the water that flows out of the waterfall fall was sealed away for some time before eventually breaking free. And what happens when metal meets an oxidizer? Well, they rust. So yes, you're not seeing water bleeding, but water rusting over. And because of the natural water cycle that occurs, the water indeed eternally flows red. And that's not something you see every day, but in truth, it's probably for the best that you don't. Number 14. The Skeleton Creature as I've already established, a very bad thing that's happening in Antarctica is that the ice is melting, and that will cause all sorts of problems for people of the world. However, the catch is that the more that things melt, the more that certain things can potentially be revealed. Enter this person who just so happened to catch something rather unique as they were monitoring Google Maps. The discovery, apparently roughly 50 miles inland from the Antarctic coast, shows a very interesting skeleton that just so happens to be lying on the ground. And this got the person who found it talking and asking exactly what he had discovered. The skeleton was intact, and nobody knows if it was recently thawed or has been frozen for thousands of years, or even if it's something new. Based on the pictures, the finder said that it was likely that it was between 12 and 20 feet long, so that would make for a pretty large animal. But exactly what animal? Well, nobody can say. That's where the comments section comes in, because some were saying that based on the look of the skeleton, it might be a seal, while another suggestion was that it was more like an alligator or a crocodile. And naturally, there are those who think that it's fake or perhaps part of a conspiracy meant to make people think that something was there when it wasn't. The truth is out there, we just have to go and find it. And by we, I mean you. I'm currently busy recording this video. Number 13. Dinosaur Fossils some of you may be surprised that there are dinosaur fossils on Antarctica, and to be clear, there have been many found in the region, but you just need to adjust your thinking here. You're thinking that Antarctica has always been like this throughout time, and scientists say that it hasn't. Case in point, the fossils that were discovered in 2011 were from a creature that's said to be over 200 million years old. At that point in time, Antarctica wasn't a frozen wasteland. Scientists claimed that it was actually believed to be a very tropical area. Getting back to the fossils at hand, it wasn't only that they were discovered, they appeared to reveal a brand new species. William Hammer of Augustana College found the new creature, a four to five foot bird hip dinosaur with a name that I can't pronounce, that he believes is related to the Fabrosaur, or another one that I can't pronounce. Now I'm sure you don't know what those are, and because I can't even pronounce them, it doesn't help, so I'll just say that they were the ones that came before certain dinosaurs that you know, like the Stegosaurus and others. And to get into even more specifics, the fossils that were found on Mount Kirkpatrick in the central Transantarctic Mountains, which divide the East and West Antarctica. The only real bad part about the find is that while there were bones, it wasn't really known whether they had found all the bones or how they all fit together. Something important when you're trying to make a scientific guess on what the creature was like. But considering that they spent months in that region looking for something of importance and then they found it, well, it probably all makes it worth it. Number 12. Unknown Bacteria to tell you this story, I actually have to touch upon two things that have already been discussed before, drilling and subglacial lakes. There are multiple countries working in Antarctica to get more data on it and make various discoveries. Russia, for example, was the country that tried for literally a decade to try and drill into Lake Vostok in order to see what was down there. And at first, the reports weren't good, as they first felt that they had found nothing but a barren wasteland. 
But then again, as the data would be re-examined, it was found that there was actually an unknown bacteria found frozen within the ice cores. And naturally, they would use this bacteria as a deterrent for alien invaders because they'll never have had exposure to such a thing and thus will wipe them out with ease. I sure do appreciate all of you who got that War of the Worlds reference. Look it up, people! The irony of this find was that there are actually a lot of conflicting reports about whether this was actually bacteria, whether it wasn't, maybe it was new, maybe it wasn't, and so on. They really couldn't seem to get their act together, even stating that it was the result of cross-contamination and not anything new. But looking at this from an objective standpoint, it honestly does make sense that we found bacteria in the ice cores because these would have been frozen in time for a long time, and thus we might not have ever experienced them here on the surface. Number 11. The Human Footprint Now, there's nothing to find by just measuring our footprints on Antarctica, I think. No, rather I'm talking about the overall human footprint on the continent, meaning how much that humans have actually touched upon the frozen tundra in various ways. And this wasn't only a guess, it was done using satellites and their various footage and photos to see just how much humans have been upon the surface. Buildings alone cover more than 390,000 square meters of land, while the visual footprint, the areas from which human activity can be seen, extends to more than 93,000 square kilometers. Now you may be thinking, and rightfully so, well this is interesting, but why do I even care? Well, as a study that was done notes that 53 countries had signed the act to let them explore Antarctica, but part of that pact was also meant to help promise there was going to be some effort put into conserving what was there and ensuring that nobody disrupted the overall ecosystem. While they are doing that to an extent, we still need to do more because the places that humans are going for various studies are very much the ice-free zones that also have the most sensitive environments in terms of being able to be hurt. There are some who truly believe that humans will live on Antarctica like we live on the other six continents one day, but whether that happens will be based in part by what we do now, and thus we need to keep our footprint measured. Number 10. The Pyramids of Antarctica I've already touched upon one or two conspiracies that have been associated with Antarctica, you know, the aliens and the animal skeleton, but there's another one that has been widely debated for years. Because Google Maps, once again, provided a look at a very unique mountain within Antarctica. But why was it so unique? Because it appeared to look like a pyramid. So much so that people honestly do feel that it is a pyramid, and as a result of that, they wonder who put it there. As speculation grew, scientists had to jump in and note one simple truth. Mountains can look like pyramids in a natural way. But if you think that stopped anyone from speculating that it was an ancient civilization that built it or that aliens had created it, well, you clearly don't know the internet. Number 9. Ancient Rainforest with this one, I'm actually going to have proof that it's real. As noted earlier, millions upon millions of years ago, Antarctica was actually a place where it was rather tropical. This has been backed up by a scientist group who found, of all things, roots. The group discovered a surprisingly well-preserved network of roots in a sediment core collected near Pine Island Glacier. Researchers said that the soil was so well-preserved that it still contained traces of pollen, spores, and remnants of flowering plants. While we obviously can't know exactly what was there before, based on what was found, they believe that it was at least part of Antarctica that was covered in a dense rainforest with a rather swampy nature. If more things like this can be discovered, that would help paint a better picture of what the frozen tundra was before it was a frozen tundra. Number 8. The Notebook A notebook would be found trapped in a hut within Antarctica, and it wasn't rediscovered for a hundred years. It would belong to George Murray Levick, a surgeon and photographer who was part of an exploration group led by Robert Falcon Scott's 1910-1913 expedition. It contains pencil notes about photos that he took in 1911, and it's an exciting find. The notebook is missing a part of the official expedition record, but after spending seven years conserving Scott's last expedition building and collection, they are delighted to still be finding new artifacts. This is a great find for the basic reason that it's part of history, specifically a part of history of those that dared to try and explore the region before key pieces of technology were even created. And the photos of that time are truly invaluable. 
Number 7. The Giant Hole when you have a frozen place like Antarctica, anything that is a disturbance in terms of the overall texture of the surface area, meaning the ice and snow, is going to be really easy to spot. Which brings us to 2021, where a giant hole known as a Polnia was found in one of the ice regions in Antarctica. This was odd because something like this had not occurred on the continent since the 1970s. These have formed beyond that, but they're oftentimes near the coast, whereas here it was very much more inland. This would create a great interest in seeing how it happened, and why it happened, and more. Some think that it was atmospheric conditions that would cause it, but that's actually unconfirmed. To be able to predict when such events could happen again is absolutely vital. Number 6. Active Volcano just when you thought it couldn't be any more dangerous to go to Antarctica, there's apparently an active volcano nearby. Specifically though, this is an account of the volcano known as Mount Erebus, which is on Ross Island near Antarctica, and it's a very special volcano because it's one of a few that have a true lava lake within it. Naturally, many people have been monitoring it, and in the last five years or so, satellites have gotten in on the action and have witnessed minor eruptions and explosions to which many wonder if it's a true eruption on the way. Nobody will know until it actually does erupt, and that might honestly be part of the problem. The bigger question may actually be how it might affect the area as a whole if it does erupt all over the place. Number 5. Antarctic Fungi now I'm going to get back in that direction, but as you might expect, there's a good reason for it. And once again, we have to go back to some old friends in Ernest Shackleton and Robert Scott. The huts that they had left behind are very valuable artifacts, as they're remnants of the age of exploration on the continent. People go there regularly to look and marvel at what is still there, but when one group saw some rotting planks of wood, they sent them to an expert to be examined. That expert would reveal that there might be some Antarctic specific specific fungi that are truly eating away at the tree huts of these explorers. This would be impressive as these huts are, well, freezing, and thus it takes some tough fungi to be able to survive there, and yet that's what appears to have happened. Hopefully it doesn't get spread to the other six continents. Number 4. Meteorites now, for something truly cosmic, there are only a few places in the world where you can be more than likely to not only find meteorites, but to find them intact. Because think about it, meteorites burn up in the atmosphere, and then they impact the ground, and then they're exposed to the elements. That is a lot of ways that they can be broken apart. But when they're in Antarctica, the impact is lowered by the snow, and the freezing temperatures actually preserve the rocks. As such, Antarctica over the years has been a gold mine for finding meteorites meteorites, and that includes ones that many claim came from Mars itself. And you thought there was nothing cool in Antarctica. Number 3. The Alien Invasion now sadly, there were no actual aliens, but if you think about it in a certain context, there is an alien force that is coming to Antarctica, and it's called humans. And when humans go somewhere, animals of other species will follow. In this case, I'm talking about how a set of flies would be carried from a ship and almost got into Antarctica. Another time, a bug would be found in one of the scientist colonies, and that would lead to an eradication alert being put up to try and get rid of them. Even the smallest invasion could cause harm to the ecosystem there, and with the continent warming up, it could mean a lot of big changes over time, which is why so many are trying to be careful around such things happening. Number 2. Giant Trench Here's one that may just blow your mind. I've already revealed how there are deep lakes beneath the surface of the continent, but now there appears to be a trench beneath the surface as well. That wouldn't be so odd per se, until I tell you that it's apparently deeper than the Grand Canyon. This would be found when satellite data and ice-penetrating radar were used to chart the Ellsworth Subglacial Highlands, an ancient mountain range buried beneath several kilometers of Antarctic ice. This trench is up to 3 kilometers deep, more than 300 kilometers long, and up to 20 25 kilometers across. This reveal could help to shape our knowledge of how parts of Antarctica were formed and where certain things originated from, hence more research is required. Number 1. Gambertsev Mountains 
Finally, one more jaw-dropping fact for you. You know by now that there are mountains on Antarctica, and that's fine and dandy. But when it comes to the Gambertsev Mountains, they're a different story. These are mountains that reach over 11,000 feet in height, and yet are buried entirely under the snow and ice of the continent. Yes, there is an entire mountain range under the surface of Antarctica. According to reports, this range was created by a glacier over 14 million years ago, and yet over time would be buried under the snow and ice. So at this point, I can't help but ask, what is not under the snow and ice of Antarctica? Could Atlantis be there? Who can say? Perhaps the body of Jimmy Hoffa? Who knows? Maybe my car keys are there. I haven't seen them in a while. I mean, who can say it's impossible given all that we've learned today? That's all from the realm of Antarctica and various things found within its snow and ice. Were you surprised by some of these discoveries that were made on the continent? And do you think that things will ever change and we'll be able to live there one day? Or are you fine never visiting? Let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.